Two separate electric vehicle crashes in the month of November, leaving eight dead and one critically injured. A fatal crash often gets little to no media coverage. You might see it in the local news, but nationally it's rare, unless it involves electric vehicle. Take a crash in Toronto, for example. It dominated the headlines. However, one of the incidents I'm about to cover got almost no media attention at all. There's a critical flaw in some newer electric vehicles that it, hardly anybody's talking about. But stick around. I'll show you where the real issue might lie. This video is sponsored by me, Stash Training. I provide customized training and consulting nationwide for fire departments and industry professionals. Whether you're a fire department looking to improve your response to a lithium ion battery or electric vehicle incidents, or an EHS professional seeking risk analysis and consulting services, I'm here to help. I offer in-depth training to ensure you and your team are prepared for the challenges of today's technology. Reach out for a quote today and let's work together to make your operations safer. On November 1st, 2024, a tragic single car crash in the town of Verona, Wisconsin, claimed the lives of five people. It happened right around 11, 12 p.m. It was a 2016 Tesla Model S. It veered off the road and collided with a tree. It instantly burst into flames. All occupants were pronounced dead at the scene. Batteries don't handle mechanical damage well. Engineers do their best to design impact-resistant battery packs, but if you hit something like a tree at a high enough speed, no matter how it's designed, it's not going to prevent catastrophic damage. There are countless reasons why someone might lose control of their vehicle. Showing off distracted driving, or even a medical emergency. Recently, I was asked why it matters so much what you're driving when you crash into something at a high rate of speed. If you're driving an EV versus an internal combustion engine vehicle. Because after all, in either case, it could kill you. It could be a really bad day. But with an EV, there's an added risk. The car is more likely to burst into flames. I like to compare it to visiting Yellowstone or the Everglades. In Yellowstone, let's say I decide to pet one of those fluffy cows. After it runs me over, there's still a good chance that I'll make it to the hospital. Might survive, might not, but at least I have a chance. In the Everglades, however, if I decide to pet an alligator, sure, it might only bite my arm, but the big difference here, it's also going to drag me to the bottom of the swamp. Not really going to work out for me. That's the added danger with EVs. The fire risk doesn't just make the crash worse, it changes the stakes entirely. The tragic crash in Verona highlights how mechanical damage to the EV's battery can lead to devastating consequences. But not all fires in EV crashes are tied to that high voltage battery. Just before Thanksgiving, another accident involving a Tesla Cybertruck in Piedmont, California, it demonstrated a different risk. The smaller lithium ion battery, it played a significant role in the fire. The crash occurred around 3 a.m. and it claimed the lives of three young adults and left a fourth seriously injured. While the investigation is still ongoing, early reports indicate that the Cybertruck's high voltage battery was not involved in the fire. This distinction is important because it highlights how not all EV fires are the same. In this case, it was likely the Cybertruck's smaller 48 volt lithium ion battery at the front of the vehicle that sparked the fire. This is something I've talked about in previous videos. The Cybertruck's high voltage battery, it's incredibly well engineered. It's heavily protected from impacts, and in this case, it's, it likely helped prevent a larger fire. However, the Cybertruck also has a 48-volt lithium-ion battery located at the front of the vehicle. This is pretty common with a lot of the newer Teslas. And unlike the main high-voltage battery pack, the smaller battery doesn't have that same level of protection in the event of a head-on collision. Given the severity of the crash, it's likely that the 48 volt battery was damaged on impact, sparking a violent fire. I've seen firsthand how a fire from a Model 3's 12 volt lithium ion battery can ignite, and it's incredibly intense. While it only lasts for a few minutes, that's long enough to ignite the rest of the vehicle. I've been to a number of crashes where the 12 volt lead acid battery in a vehicle is crushed beyond recognition. The result? You might get something sizzling. Maybe a little smoke, but typically the battery acid all leaks out of the case and very little happens after that. But for certain electric vehicles, there's even a bigger issue when you lose that 12 volt or 48 volt battery. When that battery is destroyed, the vehicle loses all power to the doors and windows. If the occupants in that vehicle, they don't know how to use the manual release handles or they don't know where they're at, they're effectively trapped inside. And remember, 
During emergencies, it all comes down to muscle memory. People often lose the ability to critically think in high stress situations. It's also important to note that the driver's behavior plays a huge role in these crashes. With instant torque and speed available to push the accelerator, EVs can unintentionally encourage risky driving if the driver isn't cautious. This isn't unique to the Cybertruck. It's a challenge faced by all high performance vehicles, including electric vehicles. Now, let me address the elephant in the room. Gasoline cars, yes, they can catch fire after a crash. Just this week in Detroit, a runway driver caused a horrific collision on the Lodge Freeway. It resulted in a fatality. But here's the key difference. In my 18 years as a firefighter, I've responded to countless car accidents. I can count on one hand the number of post-crash fires I've seen in gas-powered vehicles. And there's only been one fatality. Gasoline vehicles are less likely to ignite in a crash because of the way the fuel systems are designed. Fires do happen, but they're rare, unlike the unique challenges posed by lithium-ion batteries. These tragedies remind us that vehicle safety isn't just about the design, it's about how we drive. Speeding, reckless driving, and failure to respect the power of these machines, that's the real culprit. That said, there's still room for improvement in EV design, especially when it comes to protecting those smaller batteries, like the lithium-ion 12 and 48 volt batteries. But remember, no amount of engineering can fully protect us from the reckless decisions that people make. At the end of the day, safety isn't about the design of the vehicles, it's about the choices we make. As Mike Rowe says, safety third. Personal responsibility, that starts with us.